I'm Dr. Leslie Pritchett, the Chief Scientific Officer of BrainScope, and thank you for taking your time to watch this video. For your interest, each short video in this series focuses on a different aspect of BrainScope 1 technology. This video focuses on the structural injury classifier. Traumatic brain injury is complex and heterogeneous and includes many different etiologies. One way to think about TBI pathology is as a spectrum. All the way to the left, we have intracranial injury or bleeds, and all the way to the right, we have mild concussion or functional injuries. In this video, we're going to focus on that part of the spectrum visible on CTs, and that's structural brain injuries. Assessment of brain injury tends to be multidimensional. It requires multiple inputs that enable the provider to make clinical determinations. BrainScope 1 adds two objective EEG-based biomarkers to the process of evaluating traumatic brain injury. The structural injury classifier, the likelihood of brain injury being present, and the brain function index, the probability of functional brain impairment. What happens to the brain when you hit your head? Head injuries, even when the patient presents as mild, can result in many different kinds of injury to the brain. Contusions, hematomas, subarachnoid hemorrhages, diffuse axonal injury. But only some of these injuries can be seen on a CT scan. Others can only be seen with advanced neuroimaging tools or EEG. Both structural and functional injuries result in changes in brain electrical activity reflected especially in EEG measures of connectivity, reflecting disruption in neuronal transmission between brain regions, complexity, reflecting disorganization of neural networks, frequency distributions, reflecting decreases in oxygen flow and glucose metabolism and edema. BrainScope's EEG biomarkers are uniquely sensitive to what happens to the brain with a head injury. CT is the standard of care today for assessment of TBI in the emergency department. Approximately 85% of head injuries presenting to the emergency department receive head CTs, and yet greater than 90% of those are found to be negative. CT is not sensitive to the full spectrum of TBI, but only to structural brain injuries like the presence of blood in the brain. Advanced neuroimaging tools are sensitive to abnormalities in brain function not visible on CT scans. Here we see two images of the same brain from the same head injured individual. The top one is a CT scan, which was read as normal, and the bottom one is an MRI where we can see multiple abnormalities. EEG reflects both structural and functional brain injuries. EEG assessment today goes way beyond conventional EEG and visual inspection and is very different from what you might have learned in professional school or medical school. There's three main reasons for this. The first is advances in technology. EEG can be acquired in a handheld device, processed in real time. Advances in signal processing have enriched the measures that characterize the EEG signal. And machine learning has enabled sophisticated algorithms for the prediction and classification of abnormalities. BrainScope 1 leverages these advances to develop its electrophysiologically based biomarkers. The derivation of the structural injury classifier comes from a very large population of head injured subjects and controls, over 2,400. The structural injury classifier is a weighted combination of selected EEG features that characterize the EEG signal in traumatic brain injury. Also included in the algorithm are a small subset of clinical features considered manifestations of the physiological changes caused by TBI or risk factors of TBI. The structural injury algorithm was validated in a prospective independent multi-site FDA clinical trial with 720 subjects, ages 18 to 85, mildly presenting with a Glasgow Coma Scale score of 13 to 15, including concussion and mild TBI, and all were seen within three days of injury at 11 different U.S. emergency departments. 
This slide shows the results of the structural injury classifier from the validation trial. We've blown up that portion of the TBI spectrum that's visible on a CT scan. We see that the sensitivity to anything positive on CT is 97% with a negative predictive value of 98%. As we move to the left of this bar, we get to one cc of blood, the smallest amount of blood that can be reliably detected on a CT scan. And we see now that the sensitivity jumps to 99%. And yet, to put this in perspective, you have to go all the way to the left of this bar to 30 cc's of blood before you're even referred for a neurosurgical consult. So brain scope one is sensitive to brain injuries visible on a CT, even when they're the most mild and the least amount of detectable blood. Sensitivity to intracranial brain injury, that's any blood greater than or equal to one cc, was extremely high to even the smallest amount of measurable blood. Outstanding negative predictive value of 98% adds confidence to your ability to determine whether somebody requires a CT scan or not. This slide shows the full performance metrics for the structural injury classifier in the validation trial. And here we see sensitivity, specificity, negative predictive value and positive predictive value for the 720 patients in the trial. On the top row, we see the binary output. That's the output that tells you likely CT positive or likely CT negative. When we add the third category, equivocal, and now look at the ternary output, CT positive, CT negative, or equivocal, we see that we now bounce the sensitivity immediately to 97% and almost 99% when we're looking at those that have one cc or greater of blood. The specificity was well above that of standard CT decision rules like the New Orleans criteria or the Canadian CT head rule. And details of the study are published in the Journal of Academic Emergency Medicine by Hanley and colleagues in 2017 and discussed in a separate video in this series. BrainScope 1 provides one of three actionable results. The device screens are seen here on the left as positive, likely brain injury present, negative, likely no injury visible on head CT, or equivocal, consider further observation and evaluation. Equivocal is akin to that used standardly now in medical practice to identify those that are close to but not over the positive threshold, like a pre-diabetic or prehypertensive condition. How do we integrate BrainScope 1 structural injury classifier results? The structural injury classifier aids in the more confident clinical decision for CT scan in mildly presenting head injury patients. It provides an objective biomarker for the likelihood of a structural component to the brain injury. Extremely high negative predictive value adds confidence to the decision not to scan when the structural injury classifier is negative. Extremely high sensitivity to any abnormality visible on a CT adds additional information to the assessment of the need for a CT scan when the structural injury classifier is positive. When the structural injury classifier is equivocal, the patient was not positive, but was so close to the threshold that you might want to require additional observation or evaluation. Specificity was multiple times higher than that of standard decision rules, such as the New Orleans criteria or the Canadian CT head rule. There can be cases where the structural injury classifier is positive and the CT is found to be negative. As EEG is sensitive to brain injury, not visible on the CT, and this suggests the need for further observation. BrainScope 1 structural injury classifier was demonstrated to have potential to aid in the reduction of unnecessary CT scans by greater than 30% in the validation population and recently was replicated in clinical use as seen in the BrainScope patient registry. This last slide just reminds you of the BrainScope 1 core labeling elements. BrainScope 1 is FDA cleared. The indications include those who are head injured with Glasgow Coma Scale scores between 13 and 15, including concussion and MTBI, seen within three days after injury and ages 18 to 85 years. 
Thank you for your attention in watching this video, and I encourage you to look at other videos in this series.